Hello friends and welcome back to the third lecture series of the Data Communication and Networking. I am Jay Sarah from the School of Computer Engineering, Kalinga Institute of Industrial Technology. And in this lecture series, we are going to discuss about the various types of switching techniques and also we will be talking about the different kinds of delay in the network and then calculating the network efficiency. So let's get started. Now let us understand what is a switching technique. Switching is the technique by which nodes control a switch data to transmit it between the specific points on a network. So in a large network, there may be more than one path for transmitting these data from the sender to the receiver. There are mainly three types of switching technique that we are going to study in this lecture. Circuit switching, packet switching and message switching. Now let us understand what is circuit switching. It is a type of network where the communications between the end devices must be set up before they can communicate. A dedicated connection is established between the sender and the receiver and this connection remains as long as the end parties communicate. A circuit switch communication system involves three phases. Circuit establishment, which means setting up a dedicated link between the source and the destination. Then data transfer, which means transmitting the data between the source and the destination and circuit disconnection which means removing the dedicated links after the data transfer has been done an example of a circuit switch network is an analog telephone network in the modern circuit switch networks electronic signals pass through several switches before a connection is established and during a call no other network traffic can use those switches the circuit switch model has become popular for many different reasons. One of the main reasons is that it decreases the amount of delay the user experiences before and during a call because of the committed transmission channel which is established between the sender and the receiver which also gives a guaranteed data rarity. Although this technique is ideal for voice communications, it isn't right for any other type of connections because of the channel being reserved for the future conversations. Since dedicating one channel to a single service makes it unavailable to the other services, it makes it more expensive and a bad choice if we are looking to use the resources efficiently. Now let us understand the packet switch network. Unlike the circuit switch network, the packet switch network transfers the data in a fast and efficient manner while minimizing the transmission latency. Also the data is broken into small pieces of variable length which is called as packet. These packets are made of a header and a payload. The header is used by the networking hardware to direct the packet to its destination where the payload is extracted and used by the application software. There are two modes of packet switching, connection oriented packet switching and connectionless packet switching. Both these modes use a store and forward technique for switching the packets and while forwarding the packets, each hop first store that packet then forward it. While in a connection oriented packet switch network, a virtual circuit is established using the signaling protocol between the sender and the receiver and all packets belonging to this flow will follow this predefined route. The virtual circuit ID is provided by the switches and the routers to uniquely identify this virtual connection. In the datagram packet switching, each packet is treated independently and it contains all the necessary addressing information such as the source address, destination address and the port numbers. The packet belonging to one flow may take different routes because the routing decisions are made dynamically. So the packets arriving at the destination might be out of order. The main advantage of the packet switch network over the circuit switch network is its efficiency. The packets can find their own data paths to their destination address without the need of a dedicated channel. Also, it reduces the costs associated with running the network. The main disadvantage of a packet switch network is it is not suitable for the applications that require minimal latency. Similarly, though packet switching is able to resend the lost data packets, this is not the case if the network becomes overwhelmed by the traffic. If there is too much traffic, then the packets will be dropped. Now let us understand what is the message switch network. This technique was developed as an alternate to the circuit switching before the packet switching was introduced. 
The message switching technique is a connectionless network switching technique where the entire message is routed from the source node to the destination node and one hop at a time. A message switch network consists of a transmission link, a store and forward switch, and end stations. Each intermediate device receives the message and store it until the next device is ready to receive it and this message is forwarded to the next device. For this reason, this technique is also known as store and forward switch network. In the message switch network, the channel efficiency is greater as compared to the circuit switch networks because the data channels are shared by the network devices. Also, traffic management is efficient by assigning the priorities to the messages while reducing the traffic congestion in the network. One of the major disadvantages of a message switch network is it cannot be used for the real-time applications as storing of messages causes delay. Also, message has to be stored in each intermediate device in the network for which they require a large storing capacity. Now, let us discuss about the second topic that is network delay. A network delay refers to the amount of time it takes for a packet to go from point A to point B. If the point A is the source and the point B is the destination, then the delay is called as end-to-end -end delay. There are four basic types of network delay we will be studying about. Transmission delay, propagation delay, queuing delay, and processing delay. Now, what is a transmission delay? Transmission delay refers to the time it takes to transmit a data packet onto the outgoing link. The delay is determined by the size of the data packet and the capacity of the outgoing link. If a packet has length of L bits, then L by R is the transmission delay for that packet, which is the time it takes for the interface to push the whole packet onto the wire. In our example, the given bandwidth is 1 bits per second and the data size is 10 bits. In that case, the transmission delay is 10 seconds. Understand that a transmission delay is related to the transmission rate of an interface. So, if the data size is larger than the bandwidth, then the transmission delay will be larger. And if the bandwidth is very high, the transmission speed is faster. Now, the propagation delay. So once a bit is pushed onto the outgoing link, it needs to be propagated to the node B. And the time required to propagate from the beginning of the link to node B is the propagation delay. The delay depends on the distance between the sender and the receiver and the propagation speed of the wave signal. So the distance and velocity are two factors which contribute to propagation delay. It takes more time to reach to the destination if the distance of the medium is longer and if the velocity of the signal is larger then the packet will be received. Hence, the propagation delay can be calculated as distance upon velocity. Now, in case of optical fiber, the given velocity will be 2.1 into 10 power 8 meter per second and in case of a wireless medium, the velocity will be 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second. Now, for a given distance of 2100 meters on an optical fiber link, the propagation delay distance upon speed will be 10 microseconds. Now, queuing delay. After the packet has reached to its destination, it will not be processed immediately. It has to wait in a queue, which is sometimes also called as the buffer. So, the amount of time it waits in a queue before being processed is called queuing delay. Now, processing delay. The processing delay is the time taken by a switch to process the packet header. The delay depends on the processing speed of the switch. So, both the queuing delay and the processing delay does not have any formula and are considered as the zero value. Now, in order to calculate the total time for the end-to-end -end delivery, we calculate the sum of the transmission delay, the propagation delay, the queuing delay and the processing delay. Whereas the queuing delay and the processing delay has to be considered as the zero value since there is no formula to calculate them. Now friends, we have already understood the various types of delays. Now let us practice an exercise question to calculate the latency that is the total delay where the given link speed is 10 Mbps and the packet size is 5000 bits and the propagation delay is 10 microseconds. 
So the transmission delay can be calculated by dividing the packet size of 5000 bits by the link speed of 10 into 10 power 6 bit per second which gives us 0 0.5 milliseconds which is the time taken to transmit the data on the outgoing link. The propagation delay is already mentioned here at 0 0.1 milliseconds and now to calculate the total end-to-end -end delay we will add the transmission delay and the propagation delay which gives us 0 0.51 milliseconds and the total latency between the source to destination will be the twice of the end-to-end -end delay which is 1.02 milliseconds. So friends here is a cool fact about today's lecture with the global average internet speed setting at 5.6 Mbps, the South Korea is storming ahead as the fastest country in the world with an average internet speed of 26.7 Mbps. So friends, I hope I was able to make you grab the objectives of today's lecture. Please go through the summary of today's lecture. Also, you may like to follow the below reference book to go through in detail.